This next video wasn't exactly on the top of my to-do list, but so many of you are asking for it, and I hope you know what you're getting yourselves into here. Here's everything you missed in DreamWorks movie, The Captain Underpants. -la -la. You might not think that a movie geared towards kids would have so many Easter eggs in it, right? If you thought that, you were wrong. But I know you're better than that, so let's get right into it and point out all the Easter eggs. See that little shark grabber Tim used to spy on the little babies? I'm sorry, why are you showing me this? It's the same kind of shark grabber that George and Harold used to get into their little treehouse. And remember, at one point Tim was wearing the number one shirt? This kid is also wearing the number one shirt. Do you think that's a reference to Boss Baby? I think so. But either way, that dinosaur right there though, that's named Crackers, and that's a dinosaur from the comic novel book thing. Now don't let this next Easter egg go down the drain. <laughs> toilet reference. <laughs> Trademark! When the toilet starts breaking down and starts saying error, 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 if you look in slow motion, you will see for a brief moment it says a uh, David. Who's that? That's the guy that directed the movie! <laughs> I'm sure you noticed George and Harold are always changing the letters around on the sign. This is originally how they met though in the book. See Harold was being bullied so George changed the sign at a gas station to cause a diversion away from Harold. It worked too, distracted the bullies. This sign right here, please do not fart in diaper, is a nod to one of the comic books. Do not climb on tree? Yep, that's a sign from the comics. Wrestling that gorilla was the best of times. Get it? The best? The times? The best of times? <laughs> Very interesting! Fear not, I will set you free! And that, boys and girls, is what we call assault. And that's how you get a free ticket to jail. Oh! What is wrong with you? Oh, that's better, I can hear you now. This right here isn't exactly an Easter egg, but it is a funny sign. Unless you think about it this way. This boring lobby right here is the lobby of Snotco. And we all know the most boring character is Melvin Sneedley. Also, in the comic books, he tried to morph into a robot Melvin, but his experiment went horribly wrong because he's allergic to cats. So, maybe that's why this lobby here is boring. We can also see a sneak peek to the comic book that I'm referring to here, and that's the Bionic Booger Boy. All this happened simply because he's allergic to a cat, he was sneezing a bunch, snot came out of his nose, and then the combining machine combined him and a robot and his snot. No wonder he hates cats, and no wonder he's friends with the principal. Mr. Crump is voiced by Ed Helm, and I know him more as Andy Bernard from The Office. If you're old enough, you might remember him from The Hangover. The tiger prank is a reference to the tiger in The Hangover. And the scene in the restaurant is a reference to Andy Bernard from The Office, because he always said, Milady. All out for milady. <laughs> okay, if you say so. Hope you brought your appetitos, milady. 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 Uh, oh, sorry, Pepsi. Uh, shame on you, Pepsi. Oh. I sure hope we don't ever end up like him. Oh, this takes me back. Obviously, the plunger here takes Captain Underpants back. He was even holding it on the cover. But what the heck is up with the remote control? It just magically is floating there? Apparently physics don't apply to remote controls in this movie. Well that's right, gents and gentlemen, we have a few mistakes in this video. The cool little grape soda dispenser? Yeah, super cool and everything if it was actually full of grape soda. If you watch closely right here, you can actually see through the squirt gun. Why? Because there's no grape soda in it. And then all of a sudden, in the very next scene, <laughs> it's full of soda. <laughs> as much of a nerd that Melvin is, I find it very hard to believe that his watch wasn't set to the correct time. That's right, look closely and you will see his watch is set for exactly 3 o'clock even though it's clearly only 2.37. But if we jump to the end of the movie, his watch still says 3 o'clock. So what do you think? Do you think Melvin's watch still says 3 o'clock because this all happened in 60 seconds? Or because his battery is dead? Or because it's a fake watch? Or was this simply a mistake? This little girl apparently doesn't even know how to read. That's right, her dictionary is upside down. And this girl's eating a marker. Now she's sniffing the marker. But don't worry, there isn't just boy bad guys. 
we have girl bad guys too. The Wrath of the Wicked Wedgie Woman is actually the fifth epic novel from Captain Underpants. And she turned bad because girls react opposite than boys do from the hypno ring that was made in China. 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 In the comic book of the Wicked Wedgie Woman, Captain Underpants is hung up with a wedgie. He feels that he lost all the superpowers and for some crazy reason he believes that fabric softener will magically give him his power back. So the boys run to a store to get the fabric softener. The only problem with that is the store sells everything except fabric softener. We can see that store several times in the movie, including in the sock puppet scene! The pillow and the trampoline store are also, you guessed it, a reference to the comics. When Captain Underpants jumps out of the window, he missed the trampoline and he missed the truck full of pillows. And he landed splat on the ground. <laughs> Yes. We've finally got them, sir. At least he cleared that tall billboard from John's House of Toilets, which you guessed it is another Easter egg from the comics. One thing I don't understand though about this movie, which there are a lot of things. <laughs> I don't get it. Is that they have a sign that clearly says all comics will be ripped up, but they happen to have a box full of comics confiscated in the classroom. And even Mr. Krupp saved the comics he confiscated and didn't even throw any of them away. You think he reads them? But as far as the million dollar question goes, as if he actually read the comics or not, obviously he did. Otherwise, when they commanded him to turn into Captain Underpants, his brain wouldn't even know who that was. However, I don't think you should read the comics. Very inappropriate. Oh, look at this. We got a grade A sack up. Good to know. Good to know. Anyway. Now you might be asking if you read the comics and why is he so mean to them all the time? Probably because he didn't have any good upbringing, which is probably why he has no respect for parents and says horrible things about them like this. Your parents are obviously total failures. He so much doesn't have a life that he even goes out of his way to frame his very first detention slip he ever wrote. Even though it magically disappeared in the very next camera angle. Now these three aliens are named Zorks, Clax, and Jennifer. And you guessed it, they're from the comics. Their superpower juice they had in their little UFO is actually the real reason Captain Nerd Pants can fly, not from the green slime in the toilet. One time though, when Captain Nerd Pants couldn't fly to save George and Harold, they had to rely on a paper airplane to safely land on the ground. If you look under the hammock in the treehouse, you can see that paper airplane. Now Professor P.P. Diarrhea Steam Poopy Pants Esquire seems to be a foolish bad guy that makes a lot of mistakes. Probably because he was born on April Fool's Day. If you were born on April 1st, I feel your pain. I was almost born on April 1st, but then I wasn't. True story, I was born on the day after April 1st. Don't believe me? Go look me up on FamousBirthdays.com. <laughs> At the school fair, inside the little water soaker challenge, the targets are mostly easter eggs from the comics. Obviously, everything is coming from the comics. That Sulu the hamster, you already met the alien. It's one of the three, I'm not sure which one. And obviously, it's their little spaceship. And of course, Crackers the dinosaur. Now, this was not an easter egg, but I'm going to say it anyways because I'm a dog lover, not a cat lover. Hashtag not sorry. <laughs> Good doggy. <laughs> but if you happen to notice, this dog is chasing the giant creepy toilet because dogs try to help protect humans unlike cats where they'll just watch you die. <laughs> if you look at the little brain chart that Professor P has closely, you might notice a little fact hidden in the corner. Apparently we only use 10% of our brains. Well I do, but kids apparently use 12% of their brains. Now I don't know how true this is. I'm thinking it's not very true. We probably all use the same amount. Now if you thought that this scene right here was because DreamWorks didn't have enough money to animate, nope. They spent 38 million dollars making this movie. 38 million dollars. This was just a reference once again to the comics and their little fliporama. That's right, they would have two pages back to back with two images, one image on each page. And they look normal, but when you flip the page back and forth, it tricks your little eyeballs into thinking it's actually moving. <laughs> kind of cool, kind of not very original. Basically how every original cartoon movie was ever made. Hey, all right, good for you, pal. Now put on some clothes, you weirdo. Captain Underpants is obviously a noob at being a superhero because he learned nothing from the Incredibles. Ow. Ow. 
No capes! No, go on. It's time to go. Gotta, gotta wrap it up. Very well then! Now it's always fun going on little easter egg hunts, but I have to be honest here, if I had kids, I probably wouldn't let them read the books. I think a good alternative would be something like Boxcar Children or Hank the Cowdog. Hank the Cowdog was my favorite growing up! They're much better reads, and they stimulate the imagination of a child much better than I personally thought Captain Underpants did. Not to mention all the poopy diarrhea jokes. Now however, that's just my opinion. You're free to have your own opinion as well, and we can still be friends, even if you like the novels. I hope I was able to uncover some stuff in Captain Underpants that you never saw before. Don't forget, there's still time to enter in for your chance to win the drawing. <laughs> Go to crazynate.com or click in the links everywhere. <laughs> Remember, most importantly of all, gents and gent lads, share a smile. They are contagious. Hey, y'all, Maiden's Gaming House, and remember, you're watching Crazy Nate. Share a smile with someone today. They are contagious. <laughs> <laughs>